All right, so let's talk about medication administration guidelines. Uh, in this section, we're going to review the five rights of med administration. So I'm going to say five rights. Now, the next video after this, look at my handwriting here, my little scribble. The next video after this goes into the med pass, and they'll use the terminology three checks. Um, but Three checks and the five rights are one because when you're doing your three checks, you're reading off the five rights. I take some time to uh, really differentiate that for you because I noticed um, some students would get it wrong and then I've gotten feedback that when they go to the state and they say, show me the five rights, the students kind of freak out and they're like, what are the five rights? I never learned that. By learning the three checks, you are learning the five rights. So I don't want you to be confused by any of the terminology. Now we are starting on page 108. Okay, so if you need to pause the video for a moment to go to page 108, you can do that. Five rights, right person, right medication, right dose, right time, right route. Okay, so remember it was David Cook, um, David Cook, and it was the medication was Ultram, dose 50 milligrams. The time was three times a day, I believe it was, the root by mouth. And the only thing missing between the five rights and the six components of a med order is the doctor's signature, okay? And it's just talking because it's assuming that the doctor's signature is there. Um, by the time you're going over the five rights. So now you, you're getting into repetition. So this is the same terminology and words and components that you needed when we went over the six components of a med order video. And now we're talking about the five rights because you're assuming that the doctor's order is there when you talk about it here. So the right person, if you're uncertain, ask staff. Now, a lot of people, some we have group homes that have two people. We have some programs with one. Majority of programs have somewhere between four and five. If you've been working there for 10 years, the client's been there for 25 years, you know them. But if you remember back to unit one, you always want to keep mindfulness. Or you might simply be new. You're taking this math course. You might be a new hire. So you might wonder to yourself, well, how do I know who it is? You have, this is on page 109, and on your screen is much bigger. It's an emergency fact sheet, and it's good old David Cook here, and you can look at it in front of you. Uh, again, it'll be much bigger. It's just small here to fit the screen, um, but this is the EFS, okay? The EFS is very important. It has an updated picture. It'll have the doctor, the address, the guardian name and number, so it's a quick one-stop shop for all of the key pertinent information you need to know about David at a glance. And later on in the curriculum, we'll discuss it some more because you definitely send along the EFS when they go to the emergency room or doctor's appointments or thing of that nature. Okay, so that's how if you want to find out who and verify that you are indeed given David Cook this medication and that the client in front of you is David Cook. And now I want to say this too, and there is a test question, is sometimes someone can like, you could know who you're giving. A lot of people would bring clients over and that's why they say to have one at a time in your area. Remember our clients have behaviors and things like that. You could pop medications and another client takes it. So wrong medication um, doesn't only mean that you intentionally or you accidentally gave the wrong medication, someone could have inadvertently taken that medication too. And we'll discuss that some more later on. Um, I like to say a funny story uh, having to do with the wrong patient. When I was in nursing school, I had only done clinicals in like hospitals with computerized systems. And that's why this class is very important because you guys are not computerized and there's a lot of room for human error. Although a lot of times with technology, you have error as well. Um, but I went and picked up at a nursing home at my first year out because understandably my full-time job didn't give any OT, which they shouldn't have. But being a new nurse, I thought I knew everything. So I go to a nursing home, had 20 clients, and I couldn't tell them one from the other. 
All the name bands were worn out, and honestly, I gave meds so petrified that day. It was the uh, it was the PCAs who helped me and kind of found all my clients for me. But I always like to kind of tell that, well, now I can laugh about it because it's like 13 years since that horrific shift, but just the importance of making sure you know who you're giving medications to. Okay, the right medication. Now, remember when we were going over the six component, I showed you the med sheet, and I said, you don't know if the piece of the HCP, the prescriber is gonna write brand or generic. Okay, um, let me tell you the difference. Brand or generic, for example, I'll still use Tylenol because most people know it, and you'll see it in a picture coming up a little bit later, is that Tylenol is the brand. And if you're saving money, CVS, that right next to the brand, there's always going to be the generic. CVS usually has their own generic. So the generic version of Tylenol is acetaminophen. And so typically the chemical formulation is the same. Okay. And so right here, the right med, they're saying if you're unsure to ask the pharmacist. Now, one thing I will say about brand and generic, I usually find that all of them typically are the same, but this isn't a test question. But for some reason, seizure meds, and I always tell students in the class, seizure med, for some reason, the brand is definitely different than the generic and more effective. Now, if you want, um, well, let me say that part later on. So I won't delve into another again. Now, again, remember I had said if when we were talking about MAP consultants, if you just notice a pill, you typically get a little white pill and now you got a little red one, you always are well within your right to contact one of your um, MAP consultants and the MAP consultants to contact in this uh, arena is the pharmacist. Now, right dose. Now we're not talking about liquids. There's a section when we talk about liquids, but the right dose is in milligrams. So mg is in milligrams. And as we move on closer to transcription, there's going to be a slide with abbreviations that you're going to know. But this is kind of the first abbreviation that's pointed out to you, okay, is the milligrams. Now, we did do kind of the quick three slides, I believe it was, on the drug calculation, but I want to delve a little bit more. Now, this is on page 113 in your book, so again, it's tiny on the screen, but feel free to look at your book, 113, and if you need to take a moment, follow along with me, always pause the video. So, the doctor's ordering, and so the dose ordered is 100 milligrams. And so right here, if you know that this column, they're just showing you all the different ways. You have 100 milligrams. All of them here is 100 milligrams. So it depends on the strength. Remember, strength and amount is from pharmacy. The strength the pharmacist sent you. So now, if I wanted a dollar, how many ways can you give me a dollar? You can give me a dollar bill. You can give me four quarters. You can give me 20 nickels, you can give me 10 dimes, or 100 pennies, right? So that's a good analogy if you're trying to understand what strength and amount means, okay? Um, so for a dose of 100, if the pharmacy sends you, remember you have what the pharmacy sends you. If they send you 25 milligram tablets, then you're going to get four taps. So the math would be 100 let me see if it 100 milligrams. I'm doing the first row divided by you have. So remember, it's D over H, right? Will equal amount. So remember that from that video. So 100 milligrams divided by 25 milligrams. So 100 divided by 25 is 4. Remember the milligrams cancel out, so you're left with four tablets, and it's going to be plural, or if you abbreviate it, four tabs. And again, that's important that you do that too for transcription. Get the plural or single correct. Okay, so as easy as that, we don't need to freak out about med math here. 100 milligrams, pharmacy sends you 50 milligram tabs, you're left with two tablets. It would be 100 divided by 50 equals 2. 100 milligrams, they send you 100, 100 divided by 100 
is one tablet. Now here, let's make let's place uh, special attention down here. 100 milligram tab divided by 200. Now. As a nurse, I'm able to cut a pill in half, meaning score a pill. So this is definitely test question. All right. Um, so I'll put test question here. As a nurse, I'm able to score a pill, meaning cut it in half. All right. Here, you're not able to do that. So pharmacy can say we had 200 milligram tablets. We've cut it in half. And the little bubble packs that you'll see, they'll be half tabs. So the answer is going to be half a tab. But a reminder, you're not able to cut a pill in half. It'll already come cut. Okay. Now, if by any chance it doesn't, and this is a test question, don't say I never gave you anything. If by chance it doesn't, you are to send that back to the pharmacy. You can't administer it because you're not allowed to cut pills in half. All right, the right time, there's a particular time of day, number of times per day, time between doses, it's twice a day, daily, bedtime, three times a day, four times a day, okay? Now, uh, let's spend some time here, and this is a test question too, okay? And we're just moving along in your book. This is a test question. Um, most meds may be given safely one hour before, one hour after. So what this means here is that you have, um, if the med is 8 a.m., let's use 8 a.m. as an example, you have from 7 a.m. to give the med to 9 a.m., okay? An hour before is 7 a.m. to 8 a.m., and an hour after is 8 a.m. to 9 a.m. So that's the window of time that you have to give this medication. Okay, so for 8 a.m. med, for 8 a.m., all right, you have from, hmm, you have from 7a to 9a, and that's a test question, and t people typically do well with that, all right, because if you want to understand it, if everyone's meds do it 8, can you be in giving out five people medications exactly at eight no and the hospital for the entire floor is morning meds is scheduled for 8 a.m can you be in all those rooms at one time no okay again if there's an issue you're unsure you ask the pharmacist now the right route here is um this med uh this class map class is approved for you to administer oral medications so what does that mean after successfully completing this class and going to the state and being MAP certified, which all of you will be, that means you can go give oral medications. That doesn't mean that your training is done. For you to give any other route, um, that means the person at your facility would have had to train you. So I'm the nurse at my facility. When my a staff become newly MAP certified, I go train them in all the other routes. So you have topical, which is ointment for your skin. You have eye drops, ear drops, okay? And I like this image too because you could see going back to the medication, you could see Tylenol there and you could see acetaminophen down below. That's an example of the brand um, and generic. Now, I always uh, say it's tough usually people don't do errors with the roots because i always say i'd hate to see where else you're putting that pill right <laughs> but um if you ever see errors with the roots it's mostly eye drops or ear drops uh so say if it was a lot of people have glaucoma cataracts in one eye both eyes and so you get the left and right eye drop confused or you confuse the ear drops all right, so this on page 116 is all of the roots, and there aren't test questions like for you to memorize this by any means, um, but it's here for your knowledge just so you could look back. All right, so we're talking about oral. I did mention ophthalmic for the eye, otic for the ear. Uh, we didn't talk about intranasal sprays and topical for the skin. There's a lot of roots you don't use. So typically in the homes, we don't do IM or IV. Um, and there's only one exception to the IM and that's EpiPens. And you'll see that because they're life um, saving for if you have allergies. So we can't wait for a VNA to come bring that, but that's not covered in the map class as well. 
So here's a slide about the EpiPen. So again, when you are, when you're MAP certified, newly MAP certified, you're only covered to give oral administration, medication administration. The nurse at your facility has to uh, come train you on the other routes. Okay, so now this on page 111, I flip back to page 111. I wanted to take um, a moment to do this exercise. I'll get my little Jeopardy sound here. Um, let me read it off so that you thoroughly understand the exercise and tell me your thoughts. So it says, compare the five rights between the HCP order and the pharmacy label. Do the five rights agree? So basically what they've taken here, they've taken two forms. So we've gone over the doctor's order thoroughly. Um, and just to reiterate, remember you look at the name at the top and you quickly come down here, medication treatment orders. And that's very important. And don't do anything having to do with this middle part here. Okay, so when you get down to medication treatment orders, here's the order aspirin, okay? Now, this is the first time you've seen a pharmacy label. We're gonna go out over everything that's on this pharmacy label together. Don't you worry, but for right now, this exercise, look at to see if what the doctors ordered and what the pharmacy sent you, if they are the same thing. So tell me if the five rights agree the five rights being right patient, right med, right dose, right route, right time or frequency. Tell me if they agree. All right, let me find my little Jeopardy theme music. You could take a moment to look at that. Again, it's hard to stay quiet when you're not in front of me to see when people are done. If you're not done yet, just pause the video. So that's how we'll do all the exercise. If by the time I start explaining, you haven't completed it, just pause the video. Okay, so the answer is, let's take a look here. The answer is no. And I know usually gasp, right? Although I'm not looking at you, I could tell all of you are shocked because um, that's how it usually happens in the class. So let's go over it thoroughly so you could see. So Scott Green, Scott Green, right? Uh, so that matches. I'll put a little check. This form is going to get a little messy, but you're following along. Aspirin, okay, aspirin. But guess what's up here? Remember I always said the devil's in the detail. The doctor ordered aspirin EC. Down here, you don't see aspirin EC, you just see aspirin, okay? And that's why it's wrong, all right? Um, I'll go back and explain what EC is, but just to look at the rest of it. The dose, 81 milligrams, 81 milligrams, by mouth, by mouth, once daily in the morning, once daily in the morning. And so here the strength is 81 milligrams in the take one tablet, it's the amount. So remember pharmacy gives you strength and amount. So everything matches except this EC. This EC is the only thing that doesn't match. Now remember, we are not trying to get you to be pharmacists. We know that you're not. I'll tell you EC just means enteric coded. You're not getting tested on what EC means. It just, you're getting tested on the fact that you see that there's something that's in the doctor's label that's not in the pharmacy label. So pharmacy did not send you the correct medication, okay? The doctor wanted aspirin EC, and EC just means it has that red coating on it, so it doesn't break down in the stomach. Pharmacy sent you regular aspirin that will break down fa uh, sooner than what the doctor wanted. But again, you're not getting tested on the reasoning or what EC means. You're just getting tested on that. These two things are not the same. 